A long time ago, back before I'd ever taken my van on the road trip, I made a bit of a mistake. I'd gone to a shop to have a crack in my window fixed. Adam was just about to put a brand new steering wheel into my van and she was looking more beautiful each day. Well, I was driving down the road when a little blue moped caught my attention. It reminded me of Vietnam and I was having flashbacks when all of a sudden the guy in front of me slammed on his brakes. My reaction time was too slow. The brakes needed to be replaced but I was going to do that right before my trip so that they were brand new before I left. Big mistake because I hit this guy hard and his trailer hitch punched my beautiful van right in the face. Nobody got hurt, my insurance paid for everything, but I was devastated. I was afraid that my radiator had been destroyed, so I took the van over to Adams to assess the damage. <laughs> um, I think I might need to go get a new radiator. Yeah, the radiator was toast. This is that story. First order of business was to stop the leak in the damaged radiator. Adam took his metal shears and started cutting the front of the van up so he could pull the custom radiator guard out of place. Once it was out of there, he took some needle nose pliers and plugged up the leak. All right, so Adam was able to get the leak to stop um, and he pumped it full of water and uh, it doesn't seem to be leaking anymore. Um, I'm still really scared to drive this until I have a new radiator, so I'm gonna go pick one up tomorrow and a new radiator fan, and then uh, I won't be as terrified to be driving this thing anymore. But uh, yeah, her mouth looks beautiful. So in this big box here, we have the new radiator. That box right there is the new fan, and then we've got some coolant. So Adam is going to be taking my old damaged girl out of here. <laughs> oh man, that poor thing and uh, replace it with the new hardware. And then I won't be afraid of blowing up my engine because this thing is not cooling properly. Adam then jacked up the van to make the workspace a bit roomier. He searched for all the wires that were attached to the old radiator fan and pulled them out of place. It was then time to grab a bucket and drain the remaining liquid out of the beat up radiator. As it drained, he unscrewed the blue rubber hoses that ran along the underside of the van and connected to the coolant system on the engine. He got up under the van and started taking the radiator off, but this metal sheet was in the way, so he pulled that out of there. Honestly, not essential to the bus, so we'll just be scrapping that thing. After removing the last hose and letting it drain, it was now time to finally tackle the radiator. Adam removed the broken piece of tech and once again found something pretty funny. If you don't know by now, whoever had this van before me didn't really know what they were doing. They half-assed so many different projects throughout the van. Keeping that in mind, Adam found the thermometer that tells the fan to come on when the radiator gets too hot. Only thing was... What's up? They put this thing on the radiator to do the whole fan thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, except uh, instead of putting that into the radiator fence, they put it in there like that. Oh my god. So it was insulated. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing Adam removed was this coolant reservoir that was up in the front of the van. This thing was kind of unnecessary since there was already a reservoir in the back behind the engine. So this is another thing we don't really need to have in here. Adam then finished up the cutting with one of his air tools. Now, I trust Adam. If he took my entire van apart, I wouldn't be scared, but I gotta admit, it hurt me a little to see my van being cut up like this. I kept telling myself the whole time this never had to happen. I should have just paid attention and my van would be okay. Looking back, I'm actually really glad I got into this accident, but we'll get into that video another time. After cutting away the front, Adam started cutting the old supports off the van. For the new radiator to fit, he was going to make himself some new supports that would do a better job than the old ones. How do I know they do a better job? Well, after all the old supports and the old hardware was out of the van, it was now time to crack open the new radiator and get to work on setting it all up. Just for anyone interested in the PC hardware I attained, that is a Corsair liquid cooler, and then that is a knock to a silent fan. Now, this radiator just so happens to be the exact same one that had been destroyed in the accident. Whoever set the old one up had the same idea as us. Go to the O'Reilly's website, find the radiator that fits the newer water-cooled Vanagon, and pop that into place. Even though this is an air-cooled 82, the engineers still design them the same as the ones with the radiators. So if you ever decided to upgrade, all you'd have to do is make some mounts for it and pop that bad boy in. 
Adam didn't want a chance busting this radiator up when he was installing it into the van, so he took some of the packaging cardboard from the radiator box and taped it to the front and back side. This way he could put the radiator in and out of the van to mock up where he would need to put the brackets for it and remove it for the welding process. This radiator didn't exactly fit though. See, the old one was bent to shape to match the back of the truck that I smashed into, so it could fit, but Adam had to figure out how to bend the front of my bus back into shape just enough so that this new radiator would slide in and out of place. Kind of a genius idea if you ask me. There were also two metal bars that were braces for the front of the van. These were kind of important, but they'd been concaved when they took the hit, so Adam had to cut those out as well. It was now time to start working on brackets. Adam took a small washer and traced it four times on a piece of rubber. He then cut them into individual circles and we'll come back to those later. He then took a piece of metal and started tracing the shape of the brackets that he would need and cut them out. After spending some time shaping them, he drilled into the top side of each piece. He then took another piece of metal, traced out what he'd need, and started cutting again. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but the first two brackets would be for the top of the radiator, while the second set would be for the bottom. Once they were cut, these two other pieces got their own holes drilled into them, and the prep work for the brackets was complete. Back under the van, Adam found a couple spots to marry these new brackets. He grabbed his drill and went to town. Once he had his holes, he took some rib nuts and hammered them into the new holes that he'd just drilled. Then, using his rib nutter, he tightened them down into their permanent place. Now, if you notice, he left the middle hole without a rib nut, and you'll see why he did that later. All that was left was to test and see if the bottom support brackets would line up with his work. Well, that wasn't exactly the end. See, he now had to do this for the other side as well. Wash, rinse, repeat, and he was good to go. Adam put the radiator back up in a place and started securing screws into the rib nuts. As you can see, that one hole that he left over was for a bolt that fed through the top and a nut would screw in from the bottom. Now, remember those little rubber washers he made? Here's a peek as to what they're for. Adam realized that the brackets he made for the top of the radiator weren't going to be as secure as he'd hoped, so he went back to his piece of metal, cut and shaped a new piece, added some holes, and threw it into place to see how it looked. This little bracket wasn't complete though. He had to give it an angle so it would lay into place properly. I know that seems strange, but you'll see what he's doing very soon. He bent the bracket, welded it at the seam for support, and then he took one of the original top brackets, bent it up, welded the seam, and added supports to it to make sure that it was strong. After drilling another hole into the van, installing another riv nut, this bracket was now in place and if you notice, those little rubber washers he made are sitting under the metal to limit vibration and any potential damage. Adam really thinks of everything from the start and it impresses me every time. All he had to do was wash, rinse, and repeat for the other bracket on the other side and the bracket segment of this project was almost finished. Adam noticed that when he was installing the hoses back onto the radiator that he'd somehow lost some length. These hoses were not going to be long enough to actually secure to the radiator, so he found himself a long metal pipe and cut the ends off of it. He then took his welder and welded a ring around both of the ends of the pipe. After that, he went back into the van and attached the hose to one side of the pipe, cut the hose and attached that end to the pipe, and now he had enough length to get the end of the hose onto the radiator. One hose down, and one more to go. Adam attached the last hose to the radiator, and now the last thing to do was to install the fan and wire everything back up.
Now, this pipe on hose situation was a temporary fix. Later on, I bought some stainless steel metal pipes for the coolant system, and Adam helped me install those, but that'll be another video altogether. This project left a lot to be desired, but at the very least, I was finally able to drive her again after my accident, and though this project held me back a bit, there was only a few more projects to go before I could hit the road. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button. There will be a lot more projects coming soon. Bye guys.